Get to the highway! What? Go! You got Sarah! I cannot run him! This is Tommy Miller. He's probably not the character you think of when someone brings up The Last of Us, but maybe he should be. Tommy isn't a main character in the same vein as Joel or Ellie. Comparatively, he has a microscopic amount of screen time, but he fills a very important and necessary role as a side character in both Last of Us games. He fills it so well that we're confident in saying that Tommy is the perfect side character. And just a heads up, there will be major spoilers for The Last of Us games and TV show. Now, we don't really have to tell you how great The Last of Us is. When it showed up on the gaming scene in 2013, it changed everything. We've seen its irreversible impact on the industry as well as the general gaming community in the near decade since its release. And yes, let's all collectively acknowledge and mourn that 2013 was a decade ago. Here, this make you all nostalgic? You know, that is actually before my time. The point is that it recontextualized the entire third-person action-adventure subgenre. It reminded us of the powerful storytelling abilities of video games, it brought the community together, and later tore the community apart. And it has since spawned a record-breaking TV show. It made me count to 10 and hold out my hand and then keep it steady, but you know, I think what really impressed them was the fact that I didn't turn into a f***ing monster. Clearly, the story of Joel and Ellie, and later the story of Ellie and Abby, has left a permanent mark on the world. But those are just the main characters. And this is the last of us, us as a collective whole. There are a lot of characters in The Last of Us outside the narrow scope of those that are playable. And they are just as important to the narrative that Neil Druckmann and the Naughty Dog team were trying to spin. Obviously, you read the title of this video. So you know that we think Tommy is the best example of one of those characters. Tommy could have easily taken a backseat as far as growth, development, and overall importance in the story. A lot of side characters do. Their job tends to be limited to mechanics, guiding the main character on their quest, and maybe providing them with some extra content in the way of world-building dialogue or meaningless filler quests. You've got the quippy friends who are put into danger so the protagonist has something to fight for. Mr. Showbiz probably weaseled an upgrade. Your bland love interest who send the main character out into the world for even blander reasons and your job givers, who exist purely to annoy you. Another settlement has sent word that they need our help. I'll mark it on your map. Go we'll find out what they need. Yes, Preston. We know another settlement needs our help. Another settlement always needs our help. It's been eight years and you're still marking map locations in our nightmares. But Tommy, oh yes, Tommy. Tommy is part of a different breed of side character. The Last of Us is written so Tommy is not only mechanically necessary, but also thematically and narratively necessary. Right from the game's intro, Tommy is driving the narrative forward, literally. And when it looks like our main character is going to meet his end not 15 minutes in, his little brother shows up to save his life. From an in-universe perspective, the plot of the game could not have happened without him. The intro is not the only place where Tommy's character helps to further the plot. He mediates a potentially life-threatening situation when Joel and Ellie show up at the Jackson County power plant and he provides Joel with the location of the Firefly base he needs to get to. The intro is just the earliest example of how crucial he is to the game's story. The intro is also the first time we see Tommy's kindness and compassion, as well as his need to be a hero and do right for the world. Let's see what they need. You think you're doing? Keep driving. I got a kid, Joel. So do we. But we have room. Hey! Keep hey, driving, stop! Tommy. Stop! That's the reason he later joins up with the Fireflies and then ends up with Maria and her group. He's full of hope and optimism. He yearns for human connection. These are qualities Joel does not possess, and so Tommy is, in essence, his own brother's character foil. As Joel says, Well, I'm sorry, I trust him better than I trust myself. When you put the two in a scene together, it makes Joel's characterization that much more stark and easy to understand, which helps us as players feel that much more attached to the character we're playing. But it also makes Tommy a much more rounded out character in his own right. And that helps flush out the main theme of both games. He tried to... Oh, baby girl. It's okay. It's okay. Joel. It's no secret that the Last of Us games, and especially part one, are about love. They're about what love is capable of and what it does to people, both the good and the bad. Here's the operating room. I ain't got time for this. Where? This is, of course, most thoroughly and gut-wrenchingly demonstrated through Joel and Ellie's relationship, 
but it's also beautifully spelled out between Joel and Tommy. As much as he resists when Joel asks him for a favor, Tommy does relent to the will of his brother. I'll take that girl of yours to the Fireflies. You don't have to worry about it. After not seeing him for several years, Tommy is willing to risk his own life because Joel asked him to, because he loves him. Even with all the bad blood and years of hardship between them, he's still Joel's baby brother. And while that's the last time we see Tommy in part one, we never forget him. He becomes an even more prominent figure in part two though. Again, he is written to be mechanically necessary for the plot, but this time he plays a much more active role. He serves as a parental figure for Ellie to rebel against in the beginning, and later leaves a gruesome trail of destruction the main characters have to follow in order to get to their destination. Tommy did this. For a lot of the game, that's all we get. Tommy isn't actually a part of it, but the impact he leaves on the world very much is. And then, when playing as Abby, players are treated with what we still believe to be the best moment in the entire game. No matter where you stand on the quality of part two, it's hard to be anything but impressed by the enemy sniper boss battle. It's a fun and challenging bit of the game that has you cursing the unnamed unknown sniper the entire time. Even if you don't enjoy playing as Abby, you're still playing a game you intend to win. And this guy is standing in the way of you winning. He's an obstacle to overcome. And when it's revealed to be Tommy, well, it all makes sense. Later on, when Ellie and Dina meet up with him, Tommy once again gets to save our main character from being taken down at gunpoint, just like he did for Joel in the intro of part one. And then near the end of the game, he gives Ellie a reason to leave her happy home and start a new, uh, Adventure. I'm not gonna fight you. Yes, you will. <laughs> Once again, without the existence of Tommy's character, this game's story could not have been told. Maybe some of you would have preferred it that way. But, you know, the point still stands. And his plot driving power is only part of what makes him so crucial to part two's narrative. All those moments we just mentioned were just as thematically important as they were mechanically. If Tommy in part one was meant to be a thematic other in contrast to Joel, Tommy in part two is a thematic warning to project onto Ellie. His arc in part two is just straight up heartbreaking. We see this warm and positive man slowly turn cold and jaded after the death of his brother. He tries to protect Ellie by striking out on his own before she gets the chance, but his love for Joel drives Tommy to obsession and rage. He digs into the dark, buried parts of himself on his quest to exact revenge. His role as the enemy sniper is a perfect demonstration of the narrative the game was going for, where they tried to show us that both sides of the conflict are full of people with rich, full lives that could have been friends in another timeline. In some ways, he demonstrates that better than Ellie and Abby ever could. There are those who didn't even realize the sniper was Tommy when they played through the game. You can see it in the comments left on the videos of the fight. And isn't that just a perfect summation of the game? These people were so blinded to the other side of the conflict that they didn't recognize one of the best characters in the franchise when he was right in front of them trying to kill them. And when Tommy shows up at the farm, a broken person consumed by grief and love, Ellie has to stare down the possibility of her own future. And in the end, his speech mobilizes her. I'm not gonna do this again. It kickstarts the very end of the game and it almost kills our protagonist. Obviously, despite not being a playable character, Tommy is critical to the success of the Last of Us franchise. His story is harrowing and terrifying and beautiful. He's a savior, he's a plot device, he's a torturer. Hell, he's even a boss battle. And ultimately, he becomes another tragic example of the themes of The Last of Us. What does love do to a person? Well, in Tommy's case, it made him a perfect side character. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to Nerdstalgic Gaming. And if you're still here, let us know in the comments, who's your favorite character in The Last of Us?